The Honourable the Deputy Leader of the Opposition. Thank you. My question with that notice is to the Prime Minister. I refer the Prime Minister to his condemnation yesterday of Sydney Morning Herald journalist Paul Cleary for writing an article on 8 August 1992 that the budget deficit could be as high as $16 billion. I remind you, Prime Minister, Prime Minister you said a journalist who two days earlier put a $16 billion budget story on the front page, who was told twice that it was wrong, but he still had it published, a journalist without a shred of credibility and without any integrity. And further, I refer the Prime Minister to the statement by the Treasurer on 12 August that, and I quote, the journalist who started this speculation was very irresponsible in doing so. He was told that the $16 billion figure was wrong, and he went away and reported it in any event. And I note today's Sydney Morning Herald uh, quote from Mr Cleary as saying, in regard to the $16 billion deficit the story— The Deputy might quickly it, get to his well, question. Well, I will. It's, in, well, it's important that the facts order, be put. Order. And I don't order. Wish to be, the House uh, will come to order. Members on my right, I give a fair amount of leniency to the leaders on both sides. But to, uh, well, as you should, the, Mr. The, Speaker, the, and I'm simply the putting these. Uh, I'm uh, simply putting these. And to the deputy leader the is Prime now. Minister, if you the deputy leader me, is now really now. going a little bit too long. Well, so you I might now, quickly get will, to your no, question. No, Order. If the member for Gilmore interjects again, I'll name him. I will complete the quote I've started. In regard to the 16 billion deficit story, it came from an impartial Order. source, but I was encouraged to write it Order. by one of the member for Robertson on a point of order. The deputy will resume his seat. The member for Robertson. Mr. On the point Speaker, of order. the opposition, order. the opposition, are very fond of quoting Standing Order 144, which commences, "Questions cannot be debated." There is no provision within the Standing Orders that order. the leader of the opposition or the deputy leader of opposition conduct a debate before the question is asked, and that is precisely what. The, the deputy leader of the opposition is seeking to now debate a question, not ask a question. He's in breach of the standing order. Order. While there is some relevance in what the member for Robertson said, order. Order. I am. I continue. I continue to be generous to the deputy leader of the opposition, the leader of the National Party, and the leader of the opposition. And they. They. However. Uh, shouldn't uh, sort of go on too long with uh, questions, so we might right. quickly get to the end of this question. Well, one of your staff has told a Cleary, told Cleary to go for it in writing the $16 billion story, and I simply want to know where does the truth lie, and are you saying that Cleary's lying? The Honourable the Prime Minister, yes. Mr. Speaker, yes, I am. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Cleary spoke to David Cox on Mr. Willis's staff who said he will break the habit of a lifetime in saying that the 16 billion number is wrong and that he shouldn't write it. But he wrote it. He then, rang, he then spoke to, my, what, to one of my staff who looked for a reference in relation to 16 billion, and I had referred to it when it had been proposed in the public debate on television, and he said, oh, he hasn't disowned it, that's me, it wasn't for me to disown. And then he said he had the story strong enough, and my staff person said, well, if you determine to write it, you do what you like. Go for it. That was the context. Very disingenuously. Very, uh, yeah. no, no. very disingenuous. Order. Very disingenuous. Very disingenuous Order. for Mr Cleary to be saying that he was encouraged to write it. Very disingenuous for him to say he was to be encouraged to write it. And in the Sydney Morning Herald today, there's no reference of his conversation with Mr Cox, who told him not to write it because it was wrong. And Cleary said to me, wrong? Is it 15.9 billion? Is it just wrong or is it seriously wrong? And Cox said, no, seriously wrong. Now, that person is in the budget processes. A press secretary of mine is not, and he was not, he was not encouraged, nor was he encouraged by the Treasurer's press secretary, who he also claims encouraged him to write it. And I noticed that at the press club today, when he stood up and asked a question, where he managed to look both pompous and naive, but all at the one time. He went on to compound, to compound what he did, which just means that the Sydney Morning Herald lacks the depth and responsibility it should have in matters like this in reporting when he gets a steer from someone of, of, of involved in the budget process and gets told it's wrong to go and write it and then to write by hearsay all the other references about changes to Statement 2, which are, of course, without foundation, as I said yesterday, even though the Sydney Morning Herald today didn't said I, that, that I did not deny the allegations. Of course I deny the allegations. Of course. That, anyway, the fact of the matter is—but you've got to understand this. Statement Order. 2 is the government's property. 
is the government's property. The books and the books and the explanations are different. Now, this is listen, the dummy. The, the books and the explanations are different. Now, Mr. Speaker, the fact is, statement two is a descriptive text on the economy, and the descriptions, of course, can be written well, not so well, better, as the case may be. And of course, the government. I have ri I have written lots of statement two text, not, not fiddling forecasts. The fact is, Mr. Clare has been entirely disingen disingenuous about this. I wasn't doing what you were doing with Phil Lynch, making false numbers, right, writing corrupt numbers, corrupt numbers. Order. To have a treasurer stand in the press club and not being able to defend them—that's what you were about. That's what you were about. Order. And you were, you were found man. out very nicely as Order. well. Order. Mr. The Speaker, of New England has a point Mr. of order. Mr. Speaker, I suggest the Prime Minister withdrew that dispersion against a dead member of this place. I think it's disgraceful. Philip Lynch is no longer amongst us. It is suggested he was corrupt, or the figures were in the sea. Prime Minister or describes it as a disgrace. Order. There is no, there is no point of order. The Honourable the Prime Minister. Order. You and the boys did him in while he was in hospital. Order. I think the Prime Minister might withdraw that. The Prime Minister. Order. I think, I think the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister might withdraw that remark. Mr. Speaker, they fired him as treasurer while he was in his hospital bed. Order. Or, or, order. The, the, You've asked the Prime or, Minister to withdraw. Make him withdraw. The Leader of the National Party resumed it to the help the debate. I think if the, the inference uh, that the Prime Minister gave might not have been the inference that he just said, then it would help the debate if he withdrew. Mr. Speaker, can I just make the point? The no I'm referring to the numbers, not, not Mr. Order. Lynch. Mr. Speaker, Order. I'm referring Order. to the numbers, not Philip Lynch, not Philip Lynch. Order. But to have the deputy leader, the former deputy leader of the National Party crowing about, uh, bleeding about Mr Lynch when they fired him when he was in a hospital bed Order. is really pretty rough. Order. The, 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 the Prime Minister should withdraw the remark. Let me make this point. Order. The Prime Minister is continuing to answer. The Prime Minister is continuing This man is continuing his answer. Twisted the arms of the Reserve Bank about monetary policy, stood over bureaucrats, stood over bureaucrats, had sat up and down the Reserve Bank and the Treasury and Order. stood over bureaucrats, the the stood over bureaucrats and has bagged the Reserve Bank ever since and then was involved in the presentation of budget figures he knew was wrong. Now, Mr Speaker, that's the position of his record. Order. That's his record. Our record is, produ is to produce budget papers whose integrity is without question. Only questioned, only questioned by journalists who don't have integrity.